Today we are going to Alexandria, Virginia, where Brian Branton is going to show us how he decorates for Christmas. Every year, right after Thanksgiving, he spends three full days transforming his historic home into a holiday wonderland. He decorates every room, and on today's episode, he is going to give us a behind-the-scenes look at his process, how he decorates 25 wreaths, hangs hundreds of feet of garland, and wraps every single Christmas tree branch with lights. And guess what? He has three trees, all in just one weekend. Enjoy this festive episode of Homeworthy. Watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Be sure to visit our website, homeworthy.com, to discover amazing furniture, art, accessories, and more, all handpicked by our editors to help transform your house into a home. All of the items are inspired by the episodes you see here on Homeworthy. Enjoy! Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Brian Branson. Welcome to my home in Alexandria, Virginia. Come on in. Welcome back to my circa 1808 federal home in Alexandria, Virginia. I am a lobbyist in Washington, D.C. I head up the federal government affairs team for a large corporation. And in the my downtime, I do all of this, you know, decorating and particularly decorating Christmas is a big passion of mine. So that's how I spend the other side of my life. First of all, I also forgot to reintroduce everyone to my beloved dog, Oatsy. If you watched my video last year, you will see she is very much a fixture in this home. And here she is again, showing off her cuteness. You know, she's not really a lap dog, but Homeworthy will not think this because she is always on my lap when you guys are here. She might like the cozy fireplace. She um, loves to play ball nonstop. So if you were watching me on a day-to-day -day basis, you would see her running back and forth through the dining room to hear playing fetch. So my love of Christmas really started from being a kid, as I assume all of us have done. You know, kids love Christmas. But the thing that really kind of cracks me up is I really got a lot of what I find tasteful at Christmas from my mom, you know, the first time I ever heard the word tacky was my mom describing Christmas decorations that she did not like. And I remember asking her, what's, what does tacky mean? And then that has stuck with me. And today, um, what I think is nice and what I think is not nice at Christmas time is all kind of comes from my mom and that. Um, and, and just in case, because I'm sure all of you are now wondering what my mom thought was tacky, don't be offended. <laughs> But she does not like lights outside <laughs> at Christmas time. And neither do I. I love them on commercial buildings, but not houses. Although this is entirely subjective. I understand that. I find all Christmas decorations joyful. I just will never put lights outside myself. When I first saw this house, it was love at first sight, even though this house did not show well at all. It was a law firm, it had been a law firm for 40 years, so it very much read as an office building. It had industrial office carpet all throughout it. Uh, the walls were all kind of white and khaki, um, so it didn't really show well, but I saw the bones of it and just immediately fell in love, and I, I joked that I immediately knew how this house would look and how I would have it decorated for Christmas. And that's what sold me. The process for decorating Christmas for me is crazy. So I will start a little bit on the early side, not decorating, but planning. And, and that is, I, you know, I will try to figure out what I wanna do. I change it up ever so slightly every year, just so I'm not doing the same thing. Although 
I'm sure a lot of you are now looking at me being like, calling bullshit a little bit because they're looking at this and seeing it looks exactly the same as last year. And in this room, it does look very much the same, although there are some minor differences <laughs> that I could point out, but um, it, it, there are some differences, but it, it is very much the same. But throughout the rest of the house, I will change it up slightly. So I will have to figure out if there's any additional stuff I need, if I need to buy some more dried floral elements for any, or, or anything, or stuff like glue sticks. You know, I, I had a little bit of a glue stick emergency over the weekend and had to go scrounge for some. So I will try to prepare ahead of time for that. But then the actual decorating, it always starts the Friday after Thanksgiving. Um, I, I went home this year to my sisters in North Carolina. I flew back on Friday morning. I landed at the airport at 11 a.m. I was back in this house at 11.30, and then shortly thereafter, it all started from there. This is where most people are really gonna think how crazy I am. So if you count the total number of hours, and, and I will have to do math, for this so <laughs> I, I don't know if I will trust my math on this but let me I will say this uh, the weekend so I, my saying that I started the Friday after Thanksgiving that Friday I worked until easily midnight or so uh, Saturday I worked all day from the moment I woke up I think I, I finally started around 8 a.m. I worked until 2 a.m. So however many hours that is. And then yesterday, same thing. I was up and out starting at eight and I ended about 11. So that's the vast majority of the work. And I know <laughs> that's a little crazy. Um, there was some little stuff that I started a little bit before Thanksgiving to just make it a little easier. There was some like, um, a preserved boxwood wreath that I have, or, or the Christmas cards I save for the library. I, I went ahead and put those up just so I wouldn't have to deal with them this weekend. So uh, if you add all of that up, I don't know, that's what, I, I think 8,000 hours. <laughs> I decorate, and this is crazy, but I decorate every room in this house. So the living room, the dining room, the kitchen, my bedroom, the guest bedrooms, the library, the bathrooms. I decorate every single room in this house. Now, some of them may just be a very, very small element, but I like to have a little touch of Christmas in every single room in this house. So I have done the vast, vast majority of it. Um, the dining room is the only room I have not really finished um, since you guys got here today. I just kind of ran out of time, but I will show you guys today a little bit of how I do some of that decor. Well. Wow. There's the tree, it's all up. But look, here's what 25 wreaths thrown around the house look like. And hundreds of feet of garland. Cedar, boxwood garland, more wreaths upon wreaths upon wreaths. I have wreaths over here. And then the dining room is kind of the storage area. You see, I've already started to carry some of the containers up and lay stuff out on the table, ribbon. It, this isn't even nearly as bad as it will get. You will soon find out. See ya. All right, welcome to my Christmas decorated living room. Um, everything you see here took hours upon hours to do. I did it all this weekend. And just to give you a little bit of a sense of, of what I've done, I, I like to hang wreaths in all the windows. I think it's one of the easiest ways to decorate. I think I have like 25 wreaths total between the outside and the inside of this house. I buy a base wreath and then I add all of this dried floral elements on here. It's, it's way easy to do and I can actually show you how to do this in a little bit because I still have a, a couple wreaths to make for the dining room. But these are all just glue gunned on. So I pull out my glue gun I get out my glue sticks and I just hot glue all of this and just put it in the arrangement that I want to do. And then as you see, I just repeat and repeat and repeat the pattern. And the way I hang it is I do it with a ribbon and I actually nail that to the top of the window there. 
and it actually holds it really well. The one trick from using a glue gun, if you want to know, and I will walk through the rest of the Christmas doing this, but it leaves these little stupid glue cobwebs that I'm always picking off because I hate seeing that. So that's a little trick about the um, glue gunning a wreath. I definitely dry fruit myself. Um, it's very easy to dry what I call the, all the citrus fruit, like the oranges and quince and all that stuff. Uh, the easiest way to do that is with a food dehydrator. If you don't have a food dehydrator, you can just put your oven on at the lowest, lowest setting, uh, put it in a baking sheet and leave it in there for a couple hours or even a few hours. I just check it after about an hour and a half to make sure it's not browning, but it's it's really simple to do. But the, but the this larger fruit like these limes, no, I, I buy that from a floral wholesaler. It just saves me a little bit of time. Although I've dried tons of fruit in my life. Now let me show you my Christmas tree. Um, you may remember when I did this tour with you guys last year. I talked about how long it takes me to do this tree. To light the tree takes about three hours because I wrap every single branch with lights. I start at the bottom and I work the way up. This year I had a little elf help me out and so it took me two hours instead of three hours. It's still very time consuming but that extra hour was very helpful. A little trick if you want to do this. Um, you need to use a number of surge protectors and you also want to run an extension cord going up the tree because you can't string more than three strands of lights together at a time or you will blow a fuse and then you will have a dark spot in the middle of your tree. So I'm very, very self-conscious of that. I want to make sure that nothing blows out. I check all my lights beforehand and then I will use that surge protector and I will do maybe two strands together and then start at the surge protector again and do another one. That's why I always start from the bottom and work up. I find it easier that way. Um, this is the tree that I always call my tree full of memories. Although all of my trees are really kind of that way because all of the ornaments on, these, on this tree are really from um, family travels of growing up and ornaments meant that my parents gave me or ornaments that I've collected over the years. Each one really holds a special memory. Like for, for instance, I, I grew up in the country and we had horses and my mom gave us this one of our horse Moonbeam and I, I just love it so much. You know, she had it painted on there. Hers broke, and I, I think my sister's may have broken, but this might be the only remaining moonbeam ornament that's left. So I guard this one very carefully, and watch me break it now that I'm showing it to you guys. But um, that's some of the ornaments there. A lot of people will look at it and be like, oh, you're very much inspired by Colonial Williamsburg, and in a way I am. I always call it Southern. I, I'm really inspired by what I grew up seeing, and that's using a lot of natural elements, a lot of fresh greenery. So you, you would go outside and go through your yards and cut magnolia or cut nandina or a cuba, and you would use that all in your house, and that's what I still like to do. So I use a lot of uh, natural greenery, a lot of dried elements that really can kind of carry on through the season. Um, and uh, the other thing about it is, I don't mind when you put up greenery of watching it age through the process. So I, I will pick greenery that I think dries very well um, because I kind of like to see that look of it as it goes along throughout the season. And then finally, by the time you know, I always take my stuff down New Year's Day, but by the time, um, you know, whenever you take your Christmas decorations, whenever that is comes along, you don't feel bad about taking it down because it's already kind of starting to show its age and stuff. It's time for something new. I have no rule. Oh, well, that's, I, I'm, I'm such a liar. I, of course, have rules about placement of ornaments, but if an ornament is very sentimental to me, I don't care where it came from. If it came from CVS, 
or wherever, I will put it on this tree. And just to give you a case in point, I have a, an ornament from Cracker Barrel <laughs> that I just love because I have this deep affinity for Cracker Barrel that's, I, that's just the North Carolina in me. So it's a good reminder of my love of Cracker Barrel. By the way, if you ever come to my house for a cocktail party, I will tell you one of my favorite stories involving my mom and Cracker Barrel. It's hilarious, but it's a little too long for this video. Um, but just to show you uh, a little bit more of, of Christmas ornaments and their meaning, this right here, this ornament's a tennis ball. It's the last, it's a white tennis ball from Wimbledon. It's the last year that they used white tennis balls in Wimbledon. There was a, a professional tennis player, Tim Wilkinson, from my hometown of Shelby, North Carolina, and he brought us all back the, the last year he played at Wimbledon, the white tennis balls. And so mine has been made into an ornament so I can treasure it this way. Um, that's one of my favorite ornaments. I also have tons from my hometown of Shelby, um, I, again, uh, you see so many historic homes on here because I love going to historic homes. And so I will always buy ornaments from those that I put on the tree. And then um, again, the other ones I say are just from family trips. Um, but I, I, just, I just love it all. I can look at this tree and just you know, think back on all of these special times in my life, and that's why I love to do it. After I finish decorating, I just feel like I sit here for weeks on end, <laughs> recuperating from all the decorating, but then I just stare at this beautiful stuff, so it makes it all worthwhile. I am always been a team white light, although this year, for the first time ever, I put colored lights mixed in with white lights upstairs in my bedroom. I wanted to try something new, and now, I, I don't know, I almost feel like I'm switching over to colored lights. I like the joy it brings. I, I will show it to you in just a second. I, there are a lot of birds on this tree, and I didn't realize how many birds I had until just this year when I was, for some reason, when I was packing everything up last year, I, again, this is the OCD in me, I was packing everything together, so all the birds ended up in the same box. So when I was unpacking, I'm like, I have a whole lot of birds on this tree, but I kind of like um, ornaments that sit on top of the limbs and the best things to sit on top of the limbs are birds. So I, I just have a ton of birds all throughout this tree. But I also have this bird's nest, this actual bird's nest that's been kind of gilded. Um, that was, it actually, it was an ornament that sat on my parents' tree. It was a gift to my mom from her friend Carol. Carol Airy, in case she watches this, and that has now ended up on my tree. I love it. I literally take it around the limb and, and wrap it, just as I said, like this. And this is what I do for each limb. I will start at the back, come up, and as you see here, I then start working back down to get to the next limb, and then I come back up, use the limb to go back down, and then I do that throughout the whole tree. And sometimes I will use spare limbs to get from one limb to the other. And of course, you just probably just heard a stupid motorcycle drive by, because I live on the busiest street in town, and you will occasionally hear some traffic noise, particularly motorcycles, which I hate. Which, by the way, if you're a motorcycle driver, I'm sure I love you, but I hate motorcycles. <laughs> So I love bronze sculptures and I have a number that I guess I am now collecting. I didn't anticipate it being this way of dogs. This dog is no one in particular, although I do have a bronze sculpture of Oatsy. And at Christmas time, I like to put little scarves on them. I think it's a, just a fun little quirky way to bring um, a touch of Christmas to it. So I, I just buy some wired ribbon because then it will hold up and make it look like the dog's kind of running in the wind. And I have those on a number of bronze sculptures and even up in the library, I'll show you how I've added it to a weather vane that I have hanging up there. All right, so this is my mantle. Everything I do here is a little bit of a piece of work, although this is way easier than it looks if you, if you want to try this yourself. What I do is I buy boxwood garland at a nursery, but if you buy boxwood garland, it 
I think it's really kind of chintzy looking. You know, it, it will be very thin. So I will buy that, I'll take it apart, I will put it back together. And since I want it to all kind of hang the right way, I will also, this isn't one string of garland, it is four pieces of garland where I will hang that part there, I will hang the swoops separately, and then I create these three floral centerpieces. And what I do is I, I just kind of hang them on a nail. Watch me break this. It's literally just a floral cage that I soak with water and then I will do a base of magnolia, boxwood, holly, just any kind of greenery that you like to use. And then I will add in the same dried floral elements that I used on the wreath. So the lotus pods and these limes and the pomegranates and the yarrow. Um, it, it honestly is the easiest thing to do. It's just, it's a little time consuming, but very, very easy. Some people may hate that I nail an original mantle, but I don't know. I wouldn't be able to decorate with Christmas if I couldn't put nails everywhere. And then, as I said, it just hangs on there. It's the easiest thing in the world. But it looks so pretty. But you can do this, I swear. You can do this. The way I do this garland, because this will really kind of show you how I piece it together. This is, um, see, one piece that I kind of string I will make this other piece. It's just boxwood garland that's wired together. So I probably have like three different strands of boxwood garland wired together. Um, I break it into the pieces and then I just kind of build it out into the shape I want. I, do, I only do this mantle and the bedroom mantle are the only two I do. And the bedroom mantle, every year I kind of complain about it because I've never been as happy with it. I hang stockings on it, so it kind of limits what I could do. If I didn't, I would probably do something similar to this, although make it a little less. I have a very busy wallpaper in my bedroom, so I can't do quite the same floral stuff. It'd be too much. So I like to put greenery on my artwork. I, I think it's a, a, a good thing to do, but, but I'm a little worried about damaging the artwork. So it's the one place where I will use fake greenery. Although the way I offset that is I will add some natural elements into it to make it look more real. So I actually bought, I, I spent some money and bought what I consider very realistic looking greenery. It was more expensive. And then I went and bought actual winterberry that's real. And I just layered that over with magnolia leaves so the base of it, even though it's fake, looks real. Um, and then that way it will protect my painting and everything. I don't know, by the way, I change stuff in this house all the time. So last year I had a portrait here that I always called the Stern Lady. She's been replaced by, her, her name's Polly. It was, it was Great Aunt Polly, not my great aunt, but <laughs> on the back of it, it's like, this is Great Aunt Polly. So I just love her, I think she's so pretty. Um, so Stern Lady now uh, is up in my bedroom judging me <laughs> the whole time I'm there. I always get asked what my paint colors are. I'm going to tell you. I use Fair and Ball for every color in this house except for one room, and that's the library. This is a combination of two Faro and Ball colors. The gray is called Charleston gray. I use that throughout the trim, and I kind, of, I kind of do that throughout the house. You'll see that Charleston gray pop up in the trim going all the way up to the third floor. The wall color is called Picture Gallery Red by Faro and Ball. Um, you know, I joked with you guys last time that I painted this room three times. I really like this color. I think it's here to stay, but um, that is the color if you want to know. But I, I really do try to blend the colors together so it kind of flows. Um, this green, I think, goes really well. Oh, I should say this yellow is Sudbury yellow, which is, I carry that all throughout the hallway. This is also the color of my front door. I, I'm telling you, I'm a cheapskate about certain things, but I have no problem throwing money around on other things like Christmas decorations. But when it comes to painting, I hate 
the quotes I will get on painting. So I'm like, nope, I will do this myself. And I have a collection of brushes and rollers and I am, I'm actually a really good painter. If I ever lose my job, I think I could start my own painting business because I don't even tape. I don't have to put down anything on the floors. I will paint and, and can not even touch the ceiling. I can really follow a line. I painted right before you guys came over. I have a powder room on the, um, in the, off the library, which I can show you. And I'll, it has a really pretty wallpaper in it. And then I decided, oh, I need to really kind of spruce up the trim. So I'm gonna repaint that trim. Well, let me tell you how hard it is to repaint trim after you've already wallpapered in the tiniest little powder room imaginable. But I did it and I will show you. And did not make a mess. Even at my bar, I try to do something that makes it a little Christmassy. So all I did here was just get magnolia leaves and just put it underneath the actual bar because, um, and, you know, and I change out my, I love linen cocktail napkins. So I have a gazillion of them. And of course I have a whole slew of Christmas ones because I love to throw a big Christmas party. So um, I will switch those out. And then that, I feel like that gives a little bit of a festive stuff. I have this really cool wine cooler that I bought since you guys have been here last. It's this beautiful Georgian wine cooler. My, my goal, I didn't get it done in time for you guys today, is I'm gonna put some greenery in it. Just so when you look over this way, you will see a little bit of holly and a cuba and magnolia and everything under there as well. Make a little bit more Christmassy. So when I have a party, well here, let me show you a little bit. I, so I have some tricks of parties. I have, as you see, a gazillion different types of cocktail napkins and they will really vary on you know, wreaths and Christmas trees, you know, holly with my, uh, you know, initial on there, just a whole big mix of stuff. Anything that I think is Christmassy. Um, I split up, here's my trick with party, because I don't have the largest house. I wish I had a bigger house purely for entertaining, but since I don't do that, and since I like to invite, I really have to limit who I can invite because I can only fit a certain number of people in this house. But my trick is I split up the party. Meaning I will set up the bar in the library, which is on the second floor. And then of course all the food is in the dining room on the first floor. And that way not everyone is congregating in the same room and you can invite more people and it really fills out the house. And for that reason, when you come over here for a party, people are in every room. They're, they're sitting in my bedroom and hanging out there. Um, they will be up on the third floor and it really kind of spaces it out, which is nice because then I can have more people and I think it makes the house uh, feel more loved to have people spread all throughout it. That's also one of the reasons I decorate every single room because I know people will be in every single room. So my favorite drink at cocktail party, I'm a, I'm a bourbon guy, so anything I do will always be bourbon based. Um, my favorite drink is a Manhattan, but when it comes to actual Christmas stuff, I do love a spiced eggnog. I love a spiced cider, and that's actually a drink that I will make myself. Uh, it's really easy to do. You, you just kind of start off with, I mean, you could buy cider and do it that way, but I actually kind of like to make it. I'll buy apple juice and then add the mulling spices to it and warm it up and then lace it with bourbon and I think it's the perfect drink to sit in front of the fire. Yeah, although the dining room you're going to see, and I'll show you this dining room, it's, it's the room that I haven't finished yet. So, uh, but it'll give you a little sense of how I do this. So the way I decorate this dining room, I, I have this is tabletop tree that I put up and that I will actually light all of them um, in the same way. I just have not lit, but I can show you guys how to do that if you want. I have a couple wreaths that I hang here on the window, again, when I actually make them and I will hang them. And then I've got to make my centerpiece. This year, I've always done, I shouldn't say always, but I, use, I like to have a lot of fruit in the dining room. And normally I will make pomanders and I like to have like a big pineapple up here. But this year I just, I, I'm in the mood to like sugar some fruit. So that's gonna be my plan. 
as you see, I already have these little floral cages out here that I will use this as a base. I am going to layer this with boxwood as a base, and then I'm going to make a mountain of sugar fruit that I will just pile in here. Um, and then I will add sugar fruit to the tops of this floral cages with a base of greenery on it. That's, that's my plan for the dining room. I will have to show you guys when I'm done. I'm gonna show you how I make a wreath. I've got my trusty glue gun that I've had for years now. I, I was just kind of organizing the dried elements I use. And, and as I said, I kind of figure out a pattern I'm going with. Um, and then I will kind of loosely place that on the wreath and then take them back off and then glue them on. I've already figured out what I'm going to do because I've already made 8,000 wreaths at this point. So I don't need to do that. But um, I, I will start gluing it on and show you how quickly this thing will come together. And just to give you a little bit of a sense, you know, when I told you I was a cheapskate and I will reuse these dried elements year after year, you can see here how I have yanked this off of Reese Pass. It still has some of the uh, Reese from uh, years ago on here. And my glue gun's starting to leak now, so let me, let me get gluing. So these are called Bolani nuts, and they're you know, actual nuts. I love them because I think they look like citrus. And you know, if I put actual lemons on here, they would go bad and I think it's hard to dry citrus. So I like whole citrus that is. So I will use these Bolani nuts and add that to really kind of mimic what I do um, when I do use actual real fruit, which I, I do in the dining room all the time. But I just glue and go, and I try to make it as fast as possible. I put it in the little pattern I like to use, although when I say pattern, there's really no wrong way to do this. I mean, you can put it however you want. I just think you do have to do it what's visually appealing for you. So I try to make it where I don't have like two of the same color of the nuts side by side. That would, that would drive me a little crazy, but I just glue and I will probably over glue to make sure that they stay because I hang them and I hang these outside, but I've never lost a wreath and I've never lost elements from a wreath. So I must be doing a very good proper amount of hot glue. And if you want to know if I've ever burned myself, the answer is yes. <laughs> Hell to the yes. I burned my hand yesterday like twice because I was putting these berries on and I was, you know, kind of putting this part of the berry. And when I would slide it in, I kept pushing into that glue. Ugh, it's the most painful thing. These lotus pods, I feel like are a great way to really cover a lot of space and they're super lightweight. Um, when you're placing them on, you can break them really easily. So I always kind of press down with the palm of my hand and that way your thumbprint is not going all around it. Then it's honestly, it's just kind of layering because as I said, I, it's not that I don't like the green of a wreath. I love the green of a wreath. I just think it's really pretty when you add other things to, to it. So um, I will just keep adding and grouping until I feel like it's sufficiently covered. And you can see how it's slowly starting to come together. I should burn myself just so you can hear me scream when, I, when that glue hits me. It is hot. This weekend I was gluing and had a little bit of a hot glue emergency because I ran out and then every store that I went to they were out of hot glue and I thought I almost thought I was gonna have to cancel because I thought there's no way I'm gonna get any of this done if I don't have glue sticks, but I found them. You're in luck. 
These are those glue cobwebs I was telling you about. If the, if the cobwebs are not registering for you fine people watching this, let me tell you, when you do this, you will see them. And after you make your wreath, you will see them stringing all over it and it will drive you insane as it does me. Or I would hope it would drive you insane as it does me. But they're really easy to take off. You just have to be patient with it. Well, I, as you see, I, and a little bit there is, I, I try to, like with these really colorful things, I do kind of place those very thoughtfully so they're not kind of grouped together. The rest of it, I think, can be really kind of random. And I think it looks best when it's a little random. So I will just start filling in where I need, um, where I see a space and just start adding. Because I'm fine if it's like a pine cone by a lotus pot or... There's no wrong way to do it. You just have to do what you think's best. Okay. You're going to see how I cheat at times. As I said, I have dry, I've spent hours drying fruit, fruit before, but sometimes I like to go ahead and buy it pre-dried to make it a little bit easier. So this is quince, or I say quince. So if somebody corrects me, I will believe you. I like it because when it dries, it really kind of, you know, it's not flat. And I think it adds a lot of character. And it's a good way to kind of fill in these spaces between the other elements. All right, there you go. That is how quickly you can pull together a wreath. Now, if you wanted to, you could spend more time and really kind of nitpick it and fill it out. But that just gives you a sense of how quickly you can pull something like this together with a little bit of glue and a whole lot of dried floral elements, but that you can use year after year if you want to. So then I always kind of figure out where I'm gonna place the ribbon um, because it will cover up part of what I just spent all that time glue gunning. So I will do it, I'll place it in an area that I feel like doesn't have a lot of color because the ribbon itself has a lot of color. So I'll cover up over like the pine cones or the lotus pods. I feel like it takes away less there. I will get this situated as so. And then actually that pine cone, it, well, that's driving me crazy. So that, there we go. I figure out the height it needs to be. As I say, this is pre-cut, but I always like the center of the hole to be at the center of my window. And then if my ribbon is cut a little too long, like it is here, I will literally just bend it over to a fence and then nail it in. You could hold that with one nail, but I always put two just to be safe. And voila, we now have one of the dining room wreaths done. I made that look way too easy. <laughs> and so it's going to make it look like you can pull this together really quickly. But I swear it takes me a long time. But that is easy. You should do it too. I store everything in, in my super creepy basement. Uh, you know, I bought plastic bins and it all comes there. Because the great thing about that, those dried elements, even the stuff I use on the wreaths outside, I can reuse those year after year. And I, and I will, I'm a little cheapskate about this. I'm Listen, I spend a ridiculous amount of money on Christmas decorations every year. M my father, if he were still alive, would die. If he knew how much money I spent, he would think it's so wasteful. But I will be a cheapskate on other things and I will reuse those dried elements year after year after year until finally, they have you know, lived their lives and I have to toss them aside. So I will store those in plastic bins and keep them all in the basement. And I organize them in a really OCD crazy way. So when I take them out, it's easy for me to know exactly what I have and I can almost set up like an assembly line to make the wreaths that I need to make. But occasionally every year I will look and be like, oh, I need to buy some more dried yarrow, for instance, or some more dried pomegranate. It's now time to decorate the 
dining room tree. I used to have a full size tree in here, but this is it's before I bought this server, which I like. I, I wanted to keep a tree in here, so I thought, well, okay, I'll, I'll just buy a tabletop tree um, and do it that way. But delighted, I, you know, I always check the lights ahead of time because you don't want to put lights on a tree, particularly the way I do it, where I wrap them and then have half of the strand go bad. So I will always test them ahead of time to make sure they all light. If in any way it looks wonky, I will toss it and I will take buy a new strand. But this one looks good. So I will show you my process of how I do this thing. I will start with a bottom branch and I will begin to wrap from the back, work my way up to the front, and then I will go to the next branch. And this time, instead of wrapping the lights around the branch, I wrap the branch around the lights, if that makes sense. It's a little easier to do. I kind of pull it tight. And then you're back here at this branch and you work your way back up. And it's okay if like here, you see, you can make it a little tighter. You can adjust it so it kind of hides. You keep crisscrossing until you do this. So I will keep going up and down, side to side. I have done this for so many years now that I can be kind of fast about it, but when you have a huge tree with so many branches, that's the only reason it can take so long. And if you, particularly if you have your lights better organized than this jumble that I have them in now, it makes it go a little bit faster. I'm almost done with this one strand to just give you a sense of what you can cover with one strand. I'm definitely not going to have enough lights, just <laughs> FYI, because I think that was a 150 light strand right there, and you see what I've covered. These smaller strands, I always save for the very top, because the other little trick is once you get up to the very top, because they're tighter, I don't wrap every limb there. If not, it could almost look like you have a satellite on top of your tree. It can become too bright. so. I will be more loosey-goosey up there and doing that. I wanted to show you guys that I, as I say, I split up the party. I have, I, I do have it catered. I used to make the food myself and then I realized that's, that's way too much work and you can't really have fun at the party if you're doing that. So I have it catered. They will be set up in the kitchen, but I make them use all of my serving utensils because then I feel, I feels more homey. It's, it's using your silver and your platters and your trays. And I mean, I use everything, my napkins, my silverware, I, I pull all of that out. But then I have these little, um, you know, place cards made so uh, to put in front of food. And it has a little graphic of the house, which decorated at Christmas. I think that's a clever way to do it. And clearly I use the same food year after <laughs> year after year at my parties because I don't have to um, change these at all. But, you will see all of my little dishes that I like to use. Uh, you can't have a, be a southerner and not have pimento cheese at a party. So th this is the menu. When, when I would make the food myself, these are for the, the place cards for that menu item. I have new ones now for the catering menu, which are somewhere in this dining room, uh, or I would show you those as well. It's a ton of food, I will tell you that. I, I really layer it up with a lot of food. I, I don't want my guests to leave hungry. These are the ones when I used to cook myself, the, this is what I would make. 
you know, a pimento cheese, a cheese ball, you know, salmon dill sandwiches, sausage dip, which is always a huge hit. Um, you know, I always have roast beef for sandwiches. I make um, dessert items. I still make this even when I have catered. It is literally sugar, cream cheese, and chocolate. And I make them into little balls that you eat with pretzel sticks and they're so yummy. I do play music at my party. And of course it's all holiday. I, I like, um, I, I used to do kind of jazzy Christmas, you know, Ella Fitzgerald and Nat King Cole. Anybody that's kind of a crooner, I, I will play that. I feel like it's the makes the prettiest Christmas music. I am self-taught, except I definitely got inspired from a number of people. You know, again, um, you know Martha Stewart, of course. I mean, <laughs> who wasn't inspired by Martha Stewart? A friend of mine uh, who lives here in Old Town, Ashley Greer, is a master florist and. Um, I really was inspired by what she did and uh, really copied a lot of her stuff and doing it myself. So you can owe a lot of credit to the genius of my friend Ashley who, who showed me um, a lot of the wreath making for instance. But the other stuff, I, I'm not afraid to experiment. So if I'm trying something new, um, I will try and if it works, great. If it doesn't work, Okay, fine, I'll, I'll, I'll do something different then. I, I don't care about trying and failing. You may look behind me and think the tree behind me is beautiful. I, I'm quite honestly, I kind of hate this tree. I felt like it was the worst year for picking out Christmas trees I've ever experienced in my gazillion years of decorating for Christmas. And the same with the tree upstairs in the bedroom. I'm just really frustrated with how what a poor selection we had for Christmas trees. Um, there are lots of holes in them, they're a little wonky, and I, I didn't think they were as full as I like them to be. I really like a full, thick tree, and these were a little thin. Anyway, I, I remember a few years back, and by few, this could be even 10 years ago, I don't remember, but I was with my family in the mountains. You know, I grew up in North Carolina and a lot of tree farms around there. And my mom was talking about how that year had been such a horrible year for a drought and disease that whatever year in the future was gonna be a horrible year for Christmas trees. So the whole time I was walking around in the lot, I was thinking, this is probably that year my mom was talking about because these trees suck. So I don't know if the rest of you had this experience or else, or else it was just the nursery where I bought my trees, but it was a bit crappy year for Christmas trees in my opinion. There is a solution to fix crappy Christmas trees and that is, of course, I layer upon layer with Christmas lights and I think you can hide a lot in that. And then the other thing is I layer upon layer with Christmas ornaments because you can really strategically place ornaments to fill holes and gaps. Now, at nighttime, they really disappear. In the daytime, you kind of see them more, the, the holes and the gaps in the trees. But I will really kind of look at it. I'll turn the lights off in the daytime so you can see where those are and then try to place ornaments in those big spaces to fill those holes so you just you visually don't notice them as much all right so here's my kitchen and and what i mean when i say i decorate every room i mean every room including this kitchen i, I very much have a pine cone theme going on here starting off with this pine cone wreath i've added to the door I'm telling you, I love to hang wreaths on windows, and so I've mimicked the pine cones by doing pine cone wreaths on here, and then this pine cone wreath that Oatsy's clearly eating her lunch. This pine cone wreath um, that I have on the door, and I actually made that this year. Again, it was just glue gunning, a lot of glue gunning pine cones on that wreath. I have it, the kitchen kind of set up right now because I'm gonna sugar the fruit for the dining room table. So I've already kind of started placing the stuff around. And if, if you look over there, you will see all the fruit that I have bought. Um, some's in the fridge as well, but um, it's gonna be a little bit of a sugar mess in here in just a little bit. 
ask me what my process is and I'm going to be honest with you. I've never sugared fruit in my life. So my process from what I have read is you literally just you uh, I'm using egg whites and kind of paste, you know, brushing that on and then sprinkling sugar over it. I mean, it's supposed to be that simple. So and I'm hoping it's that simple or if not, this is going to be a little bit of a disaster and then you will see I've done something completely different in the dining room. But I, I think it's going to work out well. I saw Martha Stewart do it. If Martha Stewart can do it, anybody can do it. Okay, remember when I said I was in the mood to like sugar fruit? You baste it in egg whites, although I just dumped my whole lemon in there. And then you just put super fine sugar over it. And let me just say so far, know if I'm happy with this and this may be one of my many failed Christmas experiments so we'll see I'll, I'll keep sugaring for a while and see if I get better at it um, but so far it's it looks a little rough to me <laughs> I don't know if I want a whole bowl of this in my dining room but we'll see okay here's here's my stairwell this is the first thing that greets guests when they come to my house. So I, I like to make it a little dramatic. Normally I kind of mimic what I do in the living room. I will, I will get those floral cages and I will add that. I wanted to do something a little different, which I've done before in the past, which is really just the cedar garland. I double it up. So I will string it, cut it, come back down and string again to really make it lush just add the ribbon and I do that in sections and it, it literally is just kind of placed on there although I wire it strategically in places to add a little zhuzhing and then I have these pine cone garlands um, that I string down to add a little bit more texture but it's, it's really easy to do it's one of the fastest things that I do in decorating this house and I have a little footage that I took of you, for you over the weekend where I time-lapsed it to show you how to do it. Although it's funny, I, I have another footage that I took you where I was starting the time-lapse and then I was fighting with the garland because it was kind of knotted up. And I think I spent 15 or 20 minutes trying to unravel that garland in the correct way and then gave up and stopped that time-lapse and start all over again. So you can see both of those if you want. So this garland is just attached by zip ties. You know, I use black zip ties because they hide away. Normally I cut that off a little bit so you don't really see it, but you can do it really quickly. As you see, you can kind of just tighten it on. You can either hide the cord or cut it. I always tend to cut it except for that one. Um, the ribbon, I, I, I search high and low for ribbon all the time. This ribbon actually came from England because it, it was such a perfect match for this Sudbury yellow I do in this hallway. And so I really kind of bought them out. I, I went back to reorder some of it this year and they were out of this four inch thing. So I bought their last little thing of it. And hopefully they're going to restock it at some point. but. If, if not, I'm going to go through a little crisis in a few years when I can't reuse this ribbon. But like everything else, I will reuse this ribbon year after year after year. So I also like to decorate my light fixtures. I don't, I don't know if you've noticed, but I have very few overhead lights in this house. As a matter of fact, the only places I have overhead lights are in the light fixtures in my hallway, my stair hallway, and I have one in my library. That is it. So I like to give them a little bit of a Christmas element. This is the second place where I don't use natural greenery because I just feel like it would be a fire hazard with the um, how hot those light bulbs get. So I use um, some fake greenery and, and wrap her around the top of the light fixture there. So, um, you know, I decorate the front of the house very much the same way that I decorate the outside of the house. The wreath that you see in the windows of the living room here, it's what I mimic over in the outside as well. Um, the only difference is I don't hang those with ribbon because I feel like it would 
kind of overpower the look of the wreath and the house. So I will get green floral wire and I will use that to hold the wreath and then that green floral wire more than any other thing will disappear. You do not see it even though it's green. So it's the perfect wire to hang a wreath with. Better than like, um, I don't know, fishing line or anything because I feel like that's a little too reflective. And then I, I can show you this as an example. I will build my wreath uh, for the front door, very similar to how I built the wreath here. I, I like to decorate the back side of my front door too because I feel like it's often overlooked. So I will put a wreath on both the front and the back and show you that. As a matter of fact, I will show you. You're going to hear my traffic. I'll show you the front door wreath. This wreath is like the wreath that you saw me make in the dining room, except to the nth degree. I, I really overly layer the wreath with just element after element, because I feel like that makes a much more rich and luxurious look. And then, I, as you see up here, I always do a fan above the door. This year, I wanted to really kind of mimic what I do in the wreath. So, to do that, I had to take those floral cages that I like to use and attach them to this fan so I could attach all the greenery and all of those dried elements. And I, as I joked, it is a, uh, an engineering feat. I, I consider it one of the uh, top engineering feats of the modern world. Hopefully it won't fall on anyone's head. Christmas decorating for me is, is, and I'm sure everyone can provide the same answer, but it, it just brings me such joy. I, I, it's entirely personal. I, I do it um, for myself and for myself only. Um, I just like the look of it. I like the serenity it brings you. I like um, just the happiness and the memories, sentimentality of it. I love everything about it. Um, you know, I said last year in our video that the tree behind me is really a Christmas tree full of memories. And that's really what I love most about Christmas is that every time I'm decorating for Christmas, even if I am doing something new, I'm remembering all of those Christmases past. You know, the huge Christmases that I had with my family when it was your cousins and your grandparents and your aunts and uncles and your know, presents as high as the tree. All of that I remember, and I just, I, I feel that every time I hang a wreath or put lights on a tree or hang a stocking. I experience all of that again. All right, let's um, go show you the library. This is um, one of my favorite rooms to decorate. I added a couple new things into it this year. Okay, here is one of my favorite rooms to decorate and definitely one of my favorite rooms to sit in um, after I finish decorating. It's my library. Um, I do the same thing year after year here and it's the easiest thing in the world to do. I like to really kind of string Christmas cards and I save those every year. You heard me talk about this last year with you guys. It's as simple as just kind of hanging twine and then putting Christmas cards over it. Now, I have tons of Christmas cards where right now they're not bifolds like this. I, you can hang those, but you're gonna have to tie them onto the line. I'm a little lazy about that, which is why you see kind of the bifolds hanging there. But I, I have to tell you this, last year, after we did the video together, and that was so much fun, I got so many nice letters and Christmas cards from people who saw the Homeworthy video and sent me Christmas cards to add to the list. So I've been collecting them and adding them to my little section here. I, this is one and this is one and this is one. I, I just love it that somebody took the time and energy to, to write to me and let me know how much they enjoyed it and added their stuff. So it, it's, it's been a treat. I keep them in a box. So I, I have every Christmas card I've ever received. And I, I will definitely put up some of my favorites here year after year after year, but I will also kind of change them out. So it's one of the fun things I like to do. I will take that box of Christmas cards out and kind of re-look through them and decide which ones I'm gonna hang up. 
Now, some of them I do, you know, I, I worked on Capitol Hill for a long time, as I told you guys about. So I have some old White House Christmas cards I used to get. I don't get them anymore, but I used to get them. And, and so I will kind of display some of those. And then ones of family, one of my best childhood friends. Uh, this is her daughter, Sarah Mack. Sarah Mack is graduating from college this year. So congratulations, Sarah Mack. But that's um, one of the their Christmas cards that they send. So I will switch that up. And then some year I need to use the new ones where I'm going to just have to figure out how to hang them. I'll punch a hole in them and do it that way. The other thing that I've done in here is, as I said, I like to add scarves. So I thought, I had never done this before, but I thought, oh, you know, that horse <laughs> could really use a scarf as well. And I just love it. I can't believe I've never done it before. And then my other big new element in here is growing up, my mom had a German Christmas pyramid and I loved it as a kid. It sat on our coffee table in the living room and I would light it and watch it spin around. So I thought I need to buy one. At the end of the season last year, I bought this one from Newport Lamp and Shade and I love it so much. I have bought tons of extra candles so I can light it nonstop and just sit here and watch it spin around. The way when I do my Christmas party, I like to split it up. This is where I set up the bar. This, this room right here, and I, I mean, I can open it up to show you, but it, it's another room that I've turned into my closet and laundry room. Oh, the light's not on in it. But I will set up the bar here. I, I will move some of this furniture out and then they can stand here and make a bar and it, it just really helps with the flow of the house. I was touring a historic house in Maryland and I, I kind of want to do this. And they had taken a door like this and cut it in half to make it like a Dutch door. And then you would open up the top and flip over a shelf and that created its own bar. I'm blown away by that. So I kind of want to do the same thing with this door and make it a Dutch door so I can have a little handy bar set up there and I don't, won't even need to bring in a table giving me more room. Oh, and I will show you this. Remember I was talking about my painting that, that I do, like an actual physical painting a room. This is the powder room that I got it in my mind to paint two weeks ago. So um, I wanted to zhuzh up the color. Let me turn the light on. And I'll get out of the way and let you see it. But I wanted, to, it was a white trim and I felt like it didn't really accentuate the paper enough. So I decided to go with the bold green. And that was a pain in the butt. I'm tripping over furniture now. That was a pain in the butt to paint behind that little sink. Oh my gosh, but I did it without any, any messes. That sink, by the way, now some people don't judge me for doing this, but that is a really pretty piece of antique furniture. It, but it was just the perfect size and it's exactly what I wanted and what I needed. So I've turned it into a sink. I, I think some people will hate me for that, but I just love it. And I like to say I'm now giving this new life for that piece of furniture that will be there forever. So I don't save all my magazines. I'm not a hoarder in that thing, but I do save magazines that I love. And I was a huge Colonial Homes fan. I, I don't know if you remember that. So I have almost every issue of Colonial Homes. This one's from 19. 82, 1981. Colonial Homes started back in the 70s and, and went until the early 90s. So I have a very large percentage of those through the early 90s. And then I, I was featured in a couple magazines, so I very egotistically have those displayed here. But I was in Southern Living a few years back, so, uh, you know, I, I have it kind of Oh, here we go. Now, you know what? I think this is funny. Don't hate me, Southern Living. They clearly did not like the color of my living room and they changed it out. They put it in this orange color. My living room has never been orange, but that photo is a lie. 
<laughs> if you ever see this issue, my living room has never been that color, but it's pretty. All right, so here we are in my bedroom. Um, the biggest change that I have made in this room is with this Christmas tree. As you see, I have used colored lights for the first time in my life. Not that y'all care about what kind of lights I use, but for me, this is a huge change. I, I haven't had colored lights since a little bitty kid, but I did it a little differently. I layered it with all the white lights like I do downstairs and then overlaid that with a strand of colored lights. I found color lights are only three colors, blue, red, and green. I felt like that simplified it and made it less bold, um, and, but I, I love it. I think this is my new favorite tree. Other than taking a step back, there are huge holes in this tree because of whatever stupid crappy year this was for trees. So that dri is driving me insane. But other than the huge gaping holes, I love this tree so much. I also changed up a little bit from last year. I used to always do more of a themed tree here. I've run out of memories and the place downstairs, so in the tree downstairs, so I've had to recreate that up here. And I've started adding those same things to this tree. So it really kind of mimics what I'm doing downstairs, except this tree will be all of my more recent memories. The one downstairs really more from uh, times growing up and the uh, time with my family. So I, I like that extension of it as well. And then the other thing I did differently is normally I have a chair like this that sits here. I decided to move the chair completely to really bring the tree out into the room more. And I, I really like that aspect of it. So I love lying in my bed and looking at a tree. And, and, and during the winter months, I will kind of go to bed early, but not fall asleep. So specifically, so I can lie in bed and stare at this tree and look at it. But I will always turn them off at night. I'm very fire safety conscious. I had a house fire gosh, tw 20 years ago now. And that's made me, uh, gave me PTSD about any future house fire. So I, by the way, that house fire was not Christmas tree related. I just wanna, I just wanna state that out. Technically it was my neighbor's house that caught on fire and that fire was so big it made my house catch on fire. So not my fault, but I, it made me very self-aware, self safety conscious, and um, I will not leave it on. I will, if I'm going out during the day, I will turn them off. I will not leave them on. You can feel the heat off of all these lights at times. I almost feel like I don't even need to heat the house with it. Last year when you guys were here, um, I had just uh, wallpapered this room, and I had joked because I'm always changing things up that I was going to I was already going to redo it and that this year it would be a completely different look and you'll have to come back so you can see it. As you can see, I have not changed this wallpaper, but what I have done, and that's because I, it's kind of, it's kind of, well, I liked it even when I put it up, but it's grown on me more. I've changed some elements about this room that really, I feel like tied it in together. I kind of changed, um, the pillows that I have both on the bed, on the settee. I brought in some new furniture, like this great um, William and Mary high boy that I have here. And then I changed some of the artwork around. And to me, that ties the room together so much that I'm kind of digging this wallpaper and I, I think I'm gonna live with it for a while. Although <laughs> I am doing a little bit of work next year on the house, some more renovation work. And one of my ideas is to panel this entire bedroom because I love a paneled room so bad and I want a paneled room. If I don't panel here, I'm gonna panel the dining room. So one of those rooms will be paneled, but maybe it will still change. The other thing, I used to have this nativity set in the dining room and I've moved it up here because I think the Delft looks so good on this William and Mary piece and then it's added with those Delft vases, the, that kind of garniture I have back there that I, I, I just love it. I, I honestly, I sit in my bed all the time now looking at this stuff. 
This is the one place where I hang stockings. I, I, I feel like stockings are more casual. I, I don't like to see them in a living room. I may be different about that, but I like to put them in a bedroom. And I, I can't remember the name of the place where I got these, but she sells antique rugs. And then from like the fragments uh, or from the damaged ones, she makes these stockings. I just, I just love them because I love the texture and the look of it. So I add those here. Sometimes I put greenery in them, but I, I haven't done that. And then up here, it's again, just a, a continuation of the natural greenery elements I use, the holly, pine, boxwood, and magnolia. It's, it's, that took two seconds to pull together. Yeah, normally I will do a kind of a floral arrangement on this center table here in the bedroom. Um, friends of mine, Adam and Andy, own a great store uh, both here in Old Town and Georgetown called Mance. And they were selling these giant pottery pineapples and I just fell in love with them. I love the color of it. I love the texture of it. And so I bought this and used it as a centerpiece of my table here. And it, I think it's so pretty that I didn't even want to change it out for Christmas. So, and to me, a pineapple always represents Christmas anyway. So I, I feel like it's the perfect little accent for it. So to show the bathroom, um, you know, just to give you a little indication, I have a, a wreath that I hang on the window in the bathroom too. It, it's a, a kind of a gilded metal wreath that I think works really well in that bathroom. As you remember, I showed you last year of how I had just redone that bathroom. I paneled it and anyway, it's, it's such a small bathroom though. You'll probably need to go in there yourself to see it, but it's, um, it's a little pretty touch of Christmas, I think. It's an easy way to decorate a bathroom. As I was saying, this year I've added colored lights to the tree. What I did is I did a base layer of the white lights, just like I do downstairs, wrapping those around each branch. And then with the colored lights, I just kind of overlaid that in a, in a more loosey-goosey fashion. So it's probably about 60 to 40 ratio of white lights to colored lights. And then the other aspect of these colored lights is I found ones that are only three colors, blue, red, and green. I felt like that was more simple and would make, I don't know. I mean, not that, again, I do like colored lights, but I felt like if it was five colors, it would be too much and it would be, it would overwhelm my senses. So I did the three colors and I'm really happy with it. I, I think I will always do a colored, tree in this bedroom now. I think it's a really nice change of pace from the, the white grander tree downstairs. So now let me take you up to the third floor where I have my guest bedrooms. I, I decorate these rooms every year for Christmas too. I, I like to have guests at Christmas and, and folks will like to come see and see the stay with me and see the Christmas decorations. My family is coming again, not at Christmas time, but they're coming up for my Christmas party. So I have the rooms already decorated for them. I will carry this garland all the way up to the third floor. The only difference is I don't put ribbon on it going up here. I just like to see the green. Um, and it, as I say, it's, it's so easy to put this garland on. It takes 30 minutes tops. I love having you guys come two years in a row because then you can really kind of see how I change things every year. I like to mix stuff up all the time. So these portraits right here used to hang in the hallway by the front door. They were unframed and it always kind of drove me crazy they were unframed. I kept trying to look for antique frames to do them. I never found ones that were the right size. So I ended up buying another pair of portraits that are really framed and I love those and moved these up to the guest bedroom. People say all the time not to hang portraits in bedrooms, but I think I have portraits hanging in every bedroom. I, I love it. I don't know why people don't want to stare at, have people staring at them when they sleep, but I like it. So I think y'all should too. Um, and then I do the same thing here. I put wreaths on the windows. It's just an easy way to decorate. And then I have a little bit more fun Christmassy elements. I think you can go a little bit more what I call kid-friendly um, 
there with the Santa Clauses and stuff because you don't really see those typical Christmas stuff through the rest of the house, but I'll do it here in the guest bedrooms. This is the room I affectionately call the bird room. Um, and the same thing, I will have Reese added to this. I, I, I bought some new bird prints to carry on with the theme, which allowed me to hang those here and then move this bird silk painting uh, above the bed, which I love. And then I added a table to this room, but um, I, there's still, if y'all come back next year, I will have other changes made to this room, including I'm going to re-wallpaper this whole room, which is something I feel like I say every time now, but I really do want to re-wallpaper this room. But keeping with the bird theme, I can't change the bird theme, but I want to go with bird and thistle wallpaper. I love that wallpaper. The word home for me is, is my sanctuary. It is the place where I feel the most warmth and love. Um, I need to, my home to be completely done and finished for my life to feel settled. So it's the place where I feel the most myself. Thanks for watching. Go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content and shopping guides.